did you see it properly? I, don't take me wrong. It is not that I need a huge hug or something. Come here. Come here. Come near me. He read it again. Yeah, I need huge amount of money. That's what it says. It's a special T-shirt. The reason why I'm wearing this T-shirt as of now is because we are going to shoot a special department in this video on this today presidency. Special video because petroleum prices have gone up. Okay, so it's a very very special department that we'll be covering today. What is the department? Why am I talking about petroleum? And why is the petroleum prices gone up? Ah, why is the petroleum prices gone up? That I don't know. Let us not get into that political talks. But it's a very important department. Come along. We'll see how it goes. Yes, Dr. Suman Paul, the HOD of Petroleum Department is what we'll be talking today because petrol prices have really gone up and uh, Dr. Suman Paul, uh, I've heard uh, he's coming in an electric car or electric bike. You, am I right? Are you coming in an electric bike or a car? No, I'm just using college vehicle. <laughs> that's even better. I, I prefer public transport. Oh, uh, that, that, that's even better. That's even better. But petrol prices have gone up and this video of today presidency, Dr. Suman Paul, it becomes very, very important for us. We are talking about the petroleum engineering department and you are heading that under uh, Dean Srisal Anadini, Dr. Srisal Anadini. Under that, you are the HOD, the program chair of petroleum engineering. What is petroleum engineering, basically? Okay. So let me begin with starting only. Yes. So this uh, petroleum industry, mm. this is the job of this petroleum industry is to supply energy to the society. Right. That energy that we use for our daily purpose. Right. So this petroleum industry or energy industry, I can say right now, it is divided into three parts. Okay. Upstream, middle stream and downstream. Okay. Upstream that deals with like they will identify where that hydrocarbon or fossil fuel is trapped beneath the surface. Right. Then they will give the location to the engineers, petroleum engineers. The first part will be done by the geoscientists. Right. They will give this location to the engineers. Right. Now they will, like, whatever they have, st they have studied in four years or five years time, that they will apply them and their job is to bring that out right. onto the surface. Now, when it is in, on the surface, we cannot use it directly. It is a crude, we call it crude oil or petroleum or fossil fuel. We cannot use it directly. It has to be refined. So for that purpose, we have to send that to the refinery. So as I said, this exploration and production part that mainly we deals with petroleum engineering department. So that is comes under upstream. Now, whatever crude oil or that we have to send to the downstream that is refinery yes. refinery comes under downstream okay. and in between that linking that is midstream oh. that is basically transporting of crude oil from field to refinery yes. it can be through pipeline yeah. it can be through ships yeah. it can be through by by road tankers yeah. like that yeah. so here in petroleum engineering wherever you will go petroleum engineering we mainly deals with the courses okay. that they need for upstream industry now, as you know that uh, certain things are changing, like previously we call it, we used to call it conventional oil and natural gas. Mm -hmm. Now, and when you are dealing with, I hope you know that mm -hmm. in energy means it can be two of two types. Yeah. One is renewable, renewable one is non-renewable. Yeah. Non so renewable means it can be wind, it can be like uh, tide, yes. okay? But we are dealing with non-renewable which is naturally occurring, naturally formed, and yeah. trapped beneath the surface. Right. And the challenging job is, suppose you are trying to drill for groundwater. Mm. Almost everywhere you drill, you will get groundwater. Maybe you have to go a little de deeper depth. Yeah. But here, yeah. at the initial stage, I'm talking about just an Indian example. Yes. In yes. Assam, we started with the surface only. We got in surface, right. OK? Then we started drilling. Right. So that is on land. Okay. So now we can we are drilling five kilometer, three, uh, six kilometer, ten kilometer depth for uh, oil exploration. Oh. And now we shifted from on land to offshore. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So the challenging part here is how to identify those mm. where these hydrocarbons are trapped. That is the challenging part. It is like like you cannot drill everywhere like when we are drilling for oil and gas it will cost millions of dollars 
you cannot like if one what is called dry well means you lost that millions of dollar yeah, yeah, yeah. so geologists geophysicists they they will do all the hard job because it is like a kind of like a job like a detective yeah. you don't know yeah. where that this ma- our mother earth where she trapped everything what clue she has kept for us that we have to identify identifying those clues are very difficult because you will not get everywhere mm-hmm. and suppose i have drilled here and by the time i reach to that uh, trap it moved somewhere else we call it a uh, migration it oil can migrate thousands of kilometers wow. it's like it's like you're searching for a small shrimp in a big plate of noodles yeah <laughs> yeah then once it is mi- started migration then we have to identify where it will be getting trapped yes. and yes. accumulated yeah. so that place we have to identify accurately that yeah. place we have to give to the engineers they will yeah. drill because yeah. without drilling we cannot get it but during drilling we may face many t- many yeah. problems like yeah. if there is over pressure yeah. few few like last year you might have heard about uh, one blow out in assam yes. okay like you have seen that movie deep water horizon yeah. blow out yeah. all those things may happen right. so so in presence university we are li- dealing with students uh, who will be learning the upstream process of refining mainly upstream right. and as you know like there is a very little short uh, what is called transition or uh, line between upstream and downstream that is Yeah. middle stream we offer courses middle stream courses also oh. and we do offer some courses related to downstream because our students right. after their graduation they are joining even refineries or right. some downstream companies right. in india and abroad right. so right. for that reason what feedback we have we are offering this downstream course from the beginning itself mm-hmm. now we have increased the number of downstream courses So so with all these challenges around can we now just take a walk and tour the labs and see what all actually are the equipments that we are yes, having for the yes, students definitely definitely the petroleum geology lab yes uh, so dr suman paul uh, we'll enter the geology lab right and we will see actually what what the students can uh, get into and we are going with the process of uh, upstream to downstream so that is the correct process is what dr suman paul is uh, bringing us to so from upstream what are we first starting what should be the basic course that starts off so let me tell you first that uh, for us yeah. rock will give us the salary oh ho oh, right. because oil and gas is trapped within the rocks right, right, so right. what people thinks generally that there is a pond beneath the earth it right. is not like that ah, 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 ah. so the pore space which is there inside the rock that only holds hydrocarbon hydrocarbon will form there itself and from there it will transport or it will migrate from to other place okay. so we have to drill the rock because crude oil is trapped there and that that is why i said that rock will give us the salary okay so we all have studied that there are three kinds of rock igneous rock sedimentary rock and metamorphic rock so for us sedimentary rock is important so as this is a geology lab right. what we will prefer right. that student will learn how to identify rocks oh. and how to interpret different kind of maps right. all those things they will be studying here right. though in the industry all these things will be done by the geologist or geophysicist right. Right. but they should know because they all will be working in a team mm. okay so that uh, people from different countries different place from different background they will be working together other engineers from other branches will also be there yeah. but petroleum engineer will play major role there mm. so what we start we start with this petroleum geology lab right. where they will learn how to identify rocks and minerals mm-hmm. and at the same time like how to interpret different kind of maps mm. now here in this lab we have almost uh, 40 rock samples right. different rock right. samples right. around right. 20 mineral samples right. and also we have Uh, received some uh, core uh, drilled core and rock samples from ONGC and all mm. those things are displayed over there you can right, come right. and see yes yes we will we will definitely see that and also uh, it's it's so fascinating to you know even know that rocks are the are the major stuff because most of us probably will not be even knowing this yes right, yes, right, yes, right. yes so uh, these are the rocks that uh, our university Right. Uh, for our lab we right. kept it for display when okay. people are coming they will see okay. and that's how if we'll go some rocks okay. 
then uh, some course that we have received from ngc ngc agartala they have donated those things oh. those rock samples or course are very very costly in general okay. even world's biggest oil company will say not go for core drilling it is very costly right. so but we have received some core samples from ngc agartala Fantastic. it is there and these are the drill cuttings you can see these are the drill cuttings oh. During drilling, these cuttings will come. Based on this only, geologists will identify which kind of rock is there beneath the surface. So, so, so now, as of now, do these rocks have a little bit of hydrocarbon in them? So here it, it, it is not there. Okay, okay. But if you see these rock, like black part, that is basically shell, that, oh. that is called as source rock oh. in oil and gas industry. For conventional oil and gas, it is a source rock. Oh. So source rock means the rock which has already generated hydrocarbon. Oh. So right. shell. Now after generation, you will start migrating Correct. in upward direction, right. and it will be getting trapped right. beneath the uh, what is called cap rock, that is basically impermeable rock. Right. So it will migrate within the reservoir rock, that is basically sandstone or carbonate. Right. Okay, it has porosity, it has permeability, it will be trapped there. We have to drill there itself. Fantastic. So shell is the source rock. Right. So, so after the geology lab that, that we have known to identify the rocks and also identify a few maps, so where will we be heading next? We'll be heading to Drilling Fluid and Cements Lab. Drilling okay. Fluid and Cements Lab. Right. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. So Drilling Fluids and Cements Lab and we are with again uh, Dr. S uh, Suman Paul who is who's showing us all the labs but uh, Dr. Suman, I will want to uh, drill a little bit of uh, information out of you first. Where did you study from? Where did you uh, finish your graduation, post-graduation? Uh, how many years of experience do you have? Have you worked in any industries of petroleum engineering or anything like that? Okay, so I'm basically a petroleum geologist. Oh. I did my graduation ge geology honors from Jadavpur University, Kolkata. Fantastic. And that's why we showed the geology lab first. No, that is not the reason. Because that will start. That's a process. So it will start yes, at the yes, first. Yes, yes. Then I did uh, MSc in Applied Geology from Jadavpur University, Kolkata. Okay, okay. Then I was in a mineral exploration company. Okay, okay. Then I did my master's M.Tech from IIT, ISM Dhanbad, which is the okay. oldest institute that offering B.Tech, M.Tech, PhD in petroleum engineering in okay, India okay. since 1957. Right, right. Then I did my PhD also from there. My PhD topic was like coal bed methane exploration. That is actually considered as the unconventional uh, oil and gas, means unconventional reservoir, unconventional source of hydrocarbon. Right. Now, as I was talking about conventional oil and gas, right. Right. slowly we are shifting towards unconventional. That is also naturally occurring trapped beneath the surface. Right. So what is the difference between conventional and unconventional rocks or, or natural gas? So when we are talking about conventional or unconventional, that hydrocarbon reservoir, right. For in case of conventional, hmm. porosity is more, okay. permeability is more right. compared to unconventional reservoir. Right. So when we are moving towards the unconventional reservoir, we need to introduce uh -huh. little bit of new technologies like hydrofracturing mostly. Hydrofracturing is also used in uh, conventional oil and gas reservoir also. Okay. Hydrofracturing okay. means you have less permeability. If permeability oh. is less, oil will not move. Right. Right. So we cannot produce. So we have to enhance permeability right. artificially in that case, we'll go for hydrofracturing. That means artificially we'll create fractures. Right. So it will enhance the permeability. So it is not that regular process in conventional oil and gas. Okay. But if we're going to unconventional reservoir, it is almost regular process like coal bed, methane, shale gas. We have to go for hydrofracturing. Without fracturing it, we cannot enhance the permeability. Right. Then only can you can produce methane from there, methane gas. Exactly, exactly. Something like uh, if the rain doesn't come across, how we do cloud seeding <laughs> on those yeah. lines, on those lines. Fantastic. So, so what do we have here? Loss circulation tester. And please, can you just explain a little bit of every okay. instrument that we have? Okay. So first of all, this is a drilling fluid lab. Yeah. What is the purpose of this lab? Yeah. Yeah. So you might have seen uh, uh, what is called uh, groundwater well drilling. You yeah. might have seen some water is coming out. Basically, they are injecting water even drilling when you're drilling a hole on the wall that time also some water sometimes if you're giving it will drill, drilling will be faster it will go a little faster right mm -hmm. so in oil and gas industry we are drilling hard rock not the soft sediment so in the drilling rock just to make that uh, increase the lubricity or uh, otherwise this rock cuttings will stuck the drill pipe so that we have to prepare drilling fluid mm -hmm. and one more thing is like suppose you are drilling at the depth of 2500 meter mm -hmm. 
but you don't know what is the rock you are drilling through. Mm. So in that case, when you are using the drill, drilling mud, we call it drilling mud or drilling fluid. Okay. So that we will design in our way, uh, as per our requirement. Mm. So the purpose is that drilling fluid will bring all the rock cuttings onto the surface. Geologists will study and they will tell what are the like what is the rock, if it contains hydrocarbon or not, all those information we'll get. Mm -hmm. So drilling fluid and cementing is very important, play very important role in oil and gas industry. So first, all the equipment that you are seeing here, yeah. mostly for preparing drilling fluid, okay. there are different property we'll study here as yeah. per the rec field requirement, we'll do that. Okay. And we have one cementing also. Cementing yeah. means like suppose, for example, uh, in one particular formation, we'll, which suppose highly fractured, now in that case, what, can, what will happen, I'm just giving one small example, what can happen, the drilling fluid will enter into the formation because it is highly fractured, weak right. formation. Right. Now always it will enter, but we don't like that it should, again, it should circulate. Yeah, yeah. So if it is not coming back, then it will create difficult for us. Right. So we have to maintain the pressure of drilling mud. Why? Because situation is if the information you have your hydrocarbon right it it is under certain pressure okay. now the drilling fluid that you are injecting if the drilling fluid pressure is much much less than the formation fluid pressure then what will happen formation fluid will come into the borehole wow. then it will come up and it may leads to blowout true, that true, uh, true. Uh, some oh, example oh, i have yeah, given yeah, yeah. now in the other case, the opposite case, right. suppose the drilling fluid pressure is much, much more than the formation pressure. What will happen? Drilling fluid will enter oh. into the formation right. up to certain limit because rock has certain limits. So after that, it cannot hold that pressure. So right. it is, if it is going beyond that, right. then it will fracture the rock right. and that fluid will never come back. We call it fl fluid loss or oh. loss circulation. Yeah. So, so that is so also here. Here we have some 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 uh, sand connect kit and all this yes. content kit and and what is what is these are these are the different types of fluids that we have. Yes, yes, different. Yes, properties we are studying. Right. Okay, we will be using those things in that side. Right. In that side, uh, we have some uh, like how we prepare drilling fluid, mm -hmm. and this is your cement consistometer. Okay. Okay. As, as okay. So what we did as atmospheric consistometer right. so as I was talking about uh, uh, cementing Correct. so suppose that uh, highly fractured zone weak zone is there right. so we know if you are injecting fluid that should be in high pressure only Correct. at that particular depth Correct. then we have to do something so that fluid will not enter yeah. so for that what we do uh, at that particular depth we will design the cement in such a way right. so in only that will uh, decide the depth okay. in that zone only it will be cemented oh, right. so that that fluid will not enter exactly. So, so it is. It is actually a very vast subject, and and you know we really thought we could probably cover this in one video, but no. I guess we will have to probably do it at a two-part video. Okay. Uh, what we'll do is we will cut that one part. We will end it right here in the fluids drilling process for the next three labs, which are still pending on petroleum engineering. Correct. Five. five. So for, out of five, we have covered two. Uh, yes, two. Yeah. Right. So, so, so there are there are three labs which are actually still pending on the part two process. So please stay tuned. We will come back on the part two with Dr. Saman Paul.